Hi, I'm Ann Verhollen. I'm a soil management specialist with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. And today we're here at Canada's Digital Farm Show. It's August 24th. And Ian, why are we here? We're here because this year we decided to do a demonstration of cover crops into standing soybeans. And so we want to walk through what we have here and then we're going to see a demonstration of equipment operating. We have three varieties of soybeans planted. That uh, was planted on the 27th of May. We have a 3200 corn heat, or, yeah, 3200 corn heat unit variety here, 2775 and 2300 uh, down the way. And the idea here was to have three different stages of maturity timed for the normal uh, time of the outdoor farm show when we were going to do the live demo. This opportunity now going virtual is allowing us to do multiple timings in this demonstration to bring to you an update as we go through the season to show you the different things. So we're doing this timing, we're going to do a timing in two and a half weeks, <clears throat> we're going to harvest the crop, we're going to take the uh, harvested ground and spread with the spinner spreader again and work in the cover crop and then we're going to drill it so we'll have those four comparisons to look at throughout the fall what kind of cover are we seeing the density the uniformity is it providing erosion control etc <clears throat> we have three replicates just so that we had enough material to be able to work with and um, we are going to be using uh, fall rye and we want to thank Semican for offering the uh, rye seed to us as well as Secan for providing the soybean seed for the demonstration. So again, thank you to all of our sponsors who helped support this demonstration. And now I just want a little bit of discussion about why we're doing things. So Anne, why rye? Well, your options at this time of year are things like oats and barley or rye. But the reason why we want to use rye as an interseeding into soybeans is because unlike oats and barley that will die over winter, they will, oats and barley will also grow quite aggressively in the fall and could become a harvesting problem. So we want rye because it's going to get established, grow a deep root system, and then it's going to stay alive for the whole winter. So it's going to do what we want a cover crop to do. It's going to keep the ground covered. It's going to keep the ground in place, especially during those heavy rains that sometimes we get during uh, melt. And, and it's also going to help to control any of that uh, spring melt water. And Anne, when you look at the three varieties here that are planted in terms of their maturity, uh, what's the timing like on these currently? Okay, so when you look at the three, like we were dead on. You can see that the, the shortest season bean is certainly right at the right spot. We're at the sweet spot for doing this right now. We're starting to see leaf yellow. We're certainly, if you go into the canopy, you'll see that we're starting to see leaf drop. That's exactly the right timing if we're going to throw rye seed into the canopy. That allows the leaves to fall and uh, help that, that plant to get established with those fall rains that we hope to get. And what do you expect if we apply or seed the rye too early? Well, if we seed the rye too early, and that's what I expect to see when we look at these, the dark green beans that we've got, the, the longest season beans, what we could see is rye that emerges and is somewhat stunted. It's not gonna get well established and it's gonna be more open to, to being eaten by insects and things like that. So where I would anticipate we won't have as strong a canopy or a strong a establishment of the rye in that darker green bean. Would you also anticipate that the, the uniformity of that rye distribution on the later maturity variety that's so green right now yep, would no. not be as, well, as good as we wanted? Great point there Ian, great point. Because as we see the, the canopy opening up with the leaves dropping, we are gonna get a better spread pattern. We're gonna get more consistent establishment. And the consistency of establishment is really key to this in order to get uh, good soil protection for the whole winter. Another thing we wanna point out is that most of our cover crop work and most of our cover crop emphasis is in a corn, soy, wheat rotation because there's so much opportunity with that late season uh, cover crop timing in terms of planting right after cereal harvest, it's much more difficult in the soybean scenario. We're more limited, but these are some of the options that we're exploring and that we think you guys want to pay attention to. 
And this is the easy one. If you're just in a corn soybean rotation, interseeding or planting a cover crop after soybeans, that is the area that's the easiest to get into and the probably going to get the most consistent establishment. Interseeding into corn can be a lot more challenging. So let's go back and uh, we'll look at the equipment that we have and then we'll run the demonstration and see how the machines work at distributing and seeding rye into the standing soybean plant. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some of the equipment that we're going to use in the demonstration for seeding cover crops into standing soybeans. And with me is Hank Klein from Salford Equipment, who have uh, partnered with us on this project. And uh, Hank, I'll turn it over to you to talk about the features of the equipment. Thank you, Ian. So with us today, we have two pieces of equipment. This is our Valmar, Salford Valmar 5500. It's a ground drive unit. Uh, this one has a hydraulic fan also available in a PTO fan for those that don't have enough hydraulic uh, force. 167 cubic feet on the box with a 40 foot boom, stainless steel boom, two inch, two and a half inch tubing, and the single wheel axle and a tarp. It's all standard equipment on this unit. This is our baby unit in this uh, category. It is an airflow. We have the other units available up to 90 foot booms. Uh, mounted or pull type, uh, mounted on case, deer, and a variety of other uh, chassis. Uh, some option with 90 foot booms. The pull types are uh, 72 foot booms or 60 foot booms with inter row options to apply fertilizers in corn crop in row. The 60 speed transmission here is easily adjustable and we are today running at 100 pounds per acre and then the rollers at the bottom here this is a peg roller for either fertilizer and or coarse seed for the very fine seeds we also have the red roller available to do the fine seeds and the finer cover crops all right so this is our salford bbi liberty spreader this is a ground drive unit with a 20 inch chain 210 cubic feet, this is what we call our H body with the boards which makes it 235 cubic feet. This one has the tandem wheels and the steel sprocket for continuous drive. On the rear side here we have the double spinner spreader with our flow divider which is always adjustable to get a uniform flow and a manual gate height for, e, uh, for the rate. Hydraulic spinners on this one, also available in a PTO spinner, and a tarp. Lights and slow moving vehicle sign are standard on these products. So this is our Liberty spreader. We also have hydraulic units available up to 20 ton, the hydraulic variable rate, as well as our sniper spreader, which is a hydraulic variable rate, 12 section control, spreading 120 feet, driving interval down to 40 feet, all done automatically. For any more information, please visit our website, salfordgroup.com, and we wish everyone a great show.